Hey everybody, welcome to the launch of the second single from the Mother Earth album. This album right here, this beautifully designed double vinyl package that is actually the result of something that was much bigger in my life at the time. So I, I, I didn't head out with the thought that I'm going to record a particular album and call it Mother Earth. No, Ancient's Call, just like all of the songs on this album, came about from something that was that was uh, well grand in its scope and powerful and in many ways changed my life. And that was the filming of the series called Beyond Survival. Now, I'm going to get into the making of Ancient's Call, the song itself. I will say that I'm calling it the second single. It's not really a single type of track like Arctic Mistress is or One Giant Farm or When It's Gone. Those are more, you know, tracks you would associate with being a single, more accessible, if you will. Now, Ancient's Call is a powerful, well, in many ways, it's a powerful homage to my love of early progressive rock bands such as King Crimson, Pink Floyd, Rush, Genesis, yes. Uh, but before I get into the making of the song Ancient's Call, here's how it all came to be. I was in the middle of doing Survivor Man, and it was going powerfully well. Um, going around the world doing those survival expeditions, but I just wanted to get a little deeper. In fact, really what had happened was I started to lose my connection to the earth, which is a little bit ironic given what I was doing as Survivor Man. But the business of the business TV really got in the way. And I was seeking something deeper, something more important for me. And that was a, a, a real and true connection to the earth. And so, I got it in my mind to go around and to take part in earth ceremonies all around the world from all kinds of remote indigenous cultures. And while I was traveling around the world filming Beyond Survival, I brought with me a gentleman by the name of Brian Potvin, a singer, songwriter, uh, guitarist uh, with the band The Northern Pikes up in Canada. And I said, listen, come with me and let's just record these ceremonies. And let's uh, actually, let's record music everywhere we go. So, so in our heads it was, Let's just go record different musicians. But when we got there, we realized that the ceremonies themselves had so much potent power that musically speaking, there was something going on there. So we recorded all of these different ceremonies and brought them back to Canada. And then I sat with the tracks, with the, with the different recordings, I should say, and waited for inspiration. Now. You've already heard the story of Arctic Mistress. What happened there was the Inuit throat singers and the Inuit drummer. We recorded all of that and we came back home and we just got, we felt this vibe, this rhythm going on with the, uh, the, the throat singing that led to the song Arctic Mistress. With Ancient's Call, it was a little different. Uh, there was actually three co-writers on this song, myself, Brian Potvin, and Ian Auger. And while I, we'd already been working on Arctic Mistress and while I was listening to a lot of the other remote recordings, I was checking out a particular field recording of some children in Africa on a field and they were, and then as well a, um, a Zulu um, a priestess, if you will, divine healer who was uh, performing the scarification ceremony on me. And there was this, this sound that they were doing and I, I, could, I just could hear this melody in it. And I'll tell you what I was doing as a songwriter. As a musician, I, I thought, I, I got to channel my best Peter Gabriel here. What would Peter do, you know? And I heard this, da, 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 na, 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 na. And I just, it just really struck me. And I then thought lyrically about it all. And I realized that so many of the ceremonies that, that I took part in were certainly about connecting to nature, but a lot of them were also about connecting to the ancients. Certainly the trance dancing in the Kalahari Desert uh, was a big one for that. And it was about connecting with those of, that have gone before us uh, for guidance, for, um, well, basically that, for guidance, both spiritual and even, even specific and pragmatic guidance in where to hunt, where to fish, how to survive. That really inspired me. And I felt that it was, it was the call of the ancients, reaching out to these tribes, these indigenous cultures, reaching out to me, as it were, uh, for this connection to give guidance. And I felt this in a lot of different places in these different ceremonies. So I came into the studio one day with, uh, with Brian Poffin and I played him 
that chanting. And I said, but listen. And then I started singing to it. Ancients call, call me home, follow where I go. The message that I was receiving, but the melody that was being, that was sort of emanating from these, these cultures. And I gave that to Brian. I said, oh, this is what I really want to go on. This is what I'm really feeling here. And so we, we put a loop together in the studio. I, I sang over that. We got that. And then I left it with Brian. Now, Brian, he went heavier than I'd ever heard him go before with his own guitar work. I mean, he's a great rock and roll guitar player, but I'd not heard him go heavy and chunky and fat. Uh, and, and he, uh, you know, that sort of more modern progressive rock, if you will, thinking more along the lines of, uh, oh, I don't know, Tool, let's say. Uh, and, but he did. And so Brian came up with, he wanted the rhythm behind it all and came up with that dun 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 with his guitar. And then he was very inspired by this and then eventually uh, he took that, those tracks and went up and met with Ian Oje and then the two of them were like mad scientists in the studio, which is not my, I, that's not me at all. I like to write songs and work with individuals like that, but I cannot spend all night in a studio working with a synthesizer you know, laboring over the decay on the, the reverb on the snare. But Ian can do that. And Brian was into it. So those two started to work away on this Ancient's Call soundtrack, if you will, with the anchor being my singing of that, that chorus. When we were in the verse part of it, I really couldn't grab a melody. I couldn't, there was, I wasn't, a melody was not coming to me. What was coming to me creatively out of the ether, if you will, was the idea of just speaking. Why don't I just talk? Why don't I just tell the story? You can tell by the blood that I've left behind that I've been bound by more than blood alone. Uh, and, and, and so these, and I, there were, it, I went through several iterations on these lyrics, landing on what you, will, you are about to hear. So we get to this place where we've got it formulated and it's set up and it's powerful. And uh, Richard Jackson came in at that point with the drums. Um, and I think, uh, I think on the vinyl album, uh, Nick Chiori uh, actually did the, um, the drums for, the vi for, for this, for the Mother Earth final. But then Brian had this, he said, you know, we've got these other crazy ass chanting. That we didn't really know what to do. Because uh, it was an African six, as they call it, a rhythm. Difficult for us. To, and, he, and Brian and Ian just started playing with that. Coming up with this very short, I don't know what it is, maybe 50 seconds or something, tag ending to go with the Ancients Call. And again, we had no delusions of trying to write a pop song or a song at all when we wrote what you're about to listen to. This was a pure expression of creativity combined with spirituality, combined with ancient soul-seeking, earth-connectedness-seeking, ceremonial chanting and screaming and calling. It was all combined to bring this to you, this Ancients Call track. The last two points of this story in the making of Ancient's Call are this. When Brian had presented to me the, the crazy ass ending, as I call it, I thought, but we still want to, I really want to bring it home. And uh, working together, because uh, I can't remember if it was me or if it was Brian or if it was Ian, but at some point, I think I said, because it sounds like me, I'd love to have the voice of Mother Earth in here somewhere. And probably Ian said, well, what about Kelly Adams? And so we brought in the voice of Kelly Adams, who's sung backups on so many of my albums, all of which you can check out. So we brought in Kelly Adams, and she did this ethereal voice of Mother Earth and laid it out across the crazy-ass ending to smooth it all out. And it was so powerful and so beautiful. And it was the perfect way to round out this whole piece which is, in its essence, a modern, progressive, rock, heavy kind of track. Lastly was the production with Mike Klink. Now, Brian and Ian had done amazing production on this, and if you heard the original demos, it's actually not pretty close, and, and it's really powerful. But, of course, Mike Klink was producing the album, so uh, Mike then was to put his engineering touch on it, which is magical, and he brought a real crispness to the sound, brought it all home uh, in terms of the audio spectrum. 
very powerful. But one change that I brought into it before we fi we finalized this was in the crazy ass ending. Uh, Brian and and Ian had this da 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 da, and I had been listening to an artist called IMX, and had been influenced by that. And with Mike, I said. That thing needs to hit me in the chest like a sledgehammer. Ba bow bow. Ba bow bow. That was important to me. I really harped. I mean, even when Mike said, I think it's pretty heavy now, and I was not heavy enough. Not heavy enough. You know, keep going. Push it. Uh, so many different writers and artists over the years have inspired me with that kind of attitude. People like Paul McCartney or uh, Freddie Mercury saying, nope, not enough yet. Keep going. And so I, I implored Mike to make that, those hits as hard as they could. And to this day, I'm really glad I did because I'm very proud of it. And, I, and, I, and it excites me to hear that crazy ass ending that Brian and Ian had more or less composed, but that at the end, uh, I brought that last element into it just to bring it home. And then Kelly Adams' voice of Mother Earth just smoothed it all out. So before we go to this track, allow me to ask you to please subscribe to the Les Stroud Music channel on YouTube. Not the one that says topic, by the way. That's the one that YouTube automatically creates. I wish they wouldn't do that, but they do. Uh, no, the actual channel, Les Stroud Music. Go on and su subscribe on there and uh, you'll get exclusive versions of Arctic Mistress and all of my, all of my songs, all of my music as it, as it comes out. Uh, live tracks, acoustic intimate tracks, uh, collaborations, everything will be there on, on Les Stroud Music on YouTube. Uh, link will be obviously right here below. So one more time, here is the album, Mother Earth, available now on vinyl, this gorgeous double vinyl package. I'm asked all the time, where can you get it? On the website, my website, lestroud.ca, go to the shop page, they are there, and I will autograph them for you, by the way. So I am still so thrilled and honored to be presenting this remixed, remastered vinyl version of, Ar of Arctic Mistress, of the Mother Earth album to you all. We started with Arctic Mistress, and this is now the launch of Ancient's Call. Here we go. As they say, without further ado, here is Ancient's Call. This is Kucho, an Incan priest. The plant medicine he gives me is gathered from the hills surrounding Machu Picchu, and it's meant to open a conversation with Pachamama, known in North America as Mother Earth. In a metaphysical sense, my mind never leaves. What I feel is a very strong and very palpable connection to the earth energy like I have never felt before. It overcomes me in my consciousness, and that's the only way I can describe this six hour long journey. Shaman called that very gentle medicine, and it was, but it was very powerful too. The message is yet to come.
overcome by their trances. They seek the wisdom of the ancients. They look to the ancestors among the stars. And they ask for guidance on how to survive. For the whole earth bleeds when people cry. But the earth can heal. So can I. Instructions are that I'm to leave straight in the house, not turn around, not look back, not look at her. The Sangama has other plans for me. She has told me that I'm on a great journey and that my scars will be for spiritual protection. They will be markings that let the spirits know that I am to be looked after. What's needed from me during a ceremony like this is surrender. A surrender of the ego, of preconceived notions, of expectations, even a surrender of reason. For when reason and ego run the soul, the heart cannot live. <laughs> 